and uh, supporting decision making. And, and in a sense, there is a very dominant uh, uh, emphasis in the West on individual autonomy. And a condition like this actually calls that view into question and acknowledges that we are all members of community and we have to support one another, um, particularly when um, uh, faced with these sorts of conditions. The other thing that kind of came up in this human relationship discussion was intergenerational justice. So it's this notion, um, uh, well, it can be articulated as uh, um, related to the fourth commandment, uh, but this sense of gratitude and self-giving love. And uh, one of the members of the colloquium pointed out that for Aristotle, one could never show too much gratitude to one's parents. He wasn't, he wasn't coming from any kind of efficiency perspective. Uh, but this is this intergenerational justice issue. So principles that came out of that were things like uh, support families and other caregivers. Um, I think this was actually a very big message, that these are the people that are really struggling. And that uh, to have this uh, approach to care where we're only looking at that individual and we're focused on the, the they call it the Oslerian diagnostic framework. That's all we're about, diagnosis. It's very important, but the, the scope of care has to be greater and it has to include families and other caregivers um, as part of, uh, of how we really can be supported. An example of this from the UK in this big report was historically what would happen is somebody would have be having some memory problems. They go in and they be assessed, and they come out with the diagnosis: you have this sort of dementia. Come back in one year. That was that was standard care. And what they claim in that report is that where we are with this care is where we were in the 1950s with cancer care. So uh, for whatever reason, this issue has just been. Uh, off the radar screen. And then another thing, and people will recognize where this comes from, Catholic thought, Catholic, Catholic social justice thought, respect the appropriate level of responsible, responsibility for care and provide that with adequate support. Is that ring a bell with people? So sitting here. So particular recommendations. Uh, encourage opportunities to inter interact with and to befriend others. In other words, human, human relationships are so important. And part of the, uh, one of the claims by uh, Julian Hughes, a very eminent psychiatrist, geriatric psychiatrist from the UK, was that the, the cognitive decline that people experience is not just biological. It has to do with how people relate to them. And their environment it has a big factor and, and the importance of, of maintaining and fostering these human relationships. Um, one of the other issues that came up was just that human interaction, such as hand feeding. And uh, one of the uh, people at the colloquium, um, who, uh, uh, whose name is Carol Taylor, uh, and people may know her as the director, previous director of the Georgetown Center for Bioethics. Uh, gave a, a case example from the U.S. that was very well documented where the whole team decided that because Mrs. S. was no longer able to feed herself, they would just not offer her food anymore. They wouldn't help her. And, so, and, and this was actually, you know, very well documented. You know, uh, they put the food there, she didn't know what to do with it, and so they take the tray away. And, and so, I think what's, what, I mean, there's a lot of technical <laughs> ethical discussion, but everybody agrees that that is totally, uh, you know, um, ethically inappropriate. Uh, and so appropriate uh, things like supporting hand feeding and uh, enabling people to live safely for as long as possible in their communities. It's another big message that's driven by economic concerns that people live in the community as far as long as possible. You really have to make sure that they're not in prison, locked into a, a, a place that's just not humanly uh, 
supported. And this is, I, I think, uh, the final um, sort of core um, message that we articulated. And it has to do with a notion of stewardship of human life. And uh, a realization that we, uh, we have a duty uh, to care for, um, well, there's a duty to take care of the lives of people uh, with progressive cognitive impairments and to prevent diseases. Um, and that, um, that we should have, a, there's a reasonable expectation of assistance uh, from the community for health needs and a corresponding duty to reverence the lives of others and to contribute to the community's provision of health care. And a recommendation that came out of the consideration of stewardship uh, had to do with uh, uh, supporting ethical uh, research to improve and prevent, improve, improve prevention of progressive cognitive impairment and improve and care for and treat persons uh, with progressive cognitive impairment. It was uh, pointed out that this is an area where there's very, uh, research is quite small compared to other conditions. For instance, in the, um, uh, the report uh, from the Canadian Alzheimer's Society, they mentioned that the research money uh, that is devoted to uh, this area from um, the federal government is 15% the amount for cancer. And, uh, but there's other issues that are involved in it. It's maybe issues about how do you improve quality of life? Do we know how to make people's lives as, um, as good as possible? Um, have we done studies about that? Um, and then another one is about the, the reality that we're all mortal, call it human limitation, and that the ultimate purpose of human existence is union with God, not longevity. And if you look at the paper, there's a very good quotation from the current Pope about that, saying that if we were able to live indefinitely it would have no advantage for the individual. And yet, when you, when you listen to medical people talk, you would think that is the goal. Um, and that aging, decline, disability, and suffering, and death can have hope and meaning. And that has to be um, recognized and, uh, and supported. So, judge the appropriate limits of care. And particular rec recommendations related to that uh, educate patients and families regarding the moral distinction between intentional killing and deciding to forego medical interventions that are disproportionate and extraordinary. Oppose criteria for distributing health resources that focus exclusively on efficiency, maximizing profit, and utilitarian ethics. And then support different response uh, to human li limitation and suffering than assisted suicide or euthanasia. These are sort of technical fixes often uh, to the problem of human suffering. And what is needed is a different response. So um, a final uh, sort of foundational stance had to do with solidarity, social justice, and self-giving love. And uh, just to articulate this, that human uh, interdependency entails solidarity and a concern to promote the participation of all in society. Social justice entails that societies prefer systems of distributing healthcare resources that help, uh, that most help the needy and the vulnerable. And self-giving love goes beyond and completes social justice by urging people to care for the needy and vulnerable uh, and to do so with heartfelt concern. So it's not just a sense of duty, uh, but a Christian charity. And principles that uh, come from that uh, respect and the appropriate level of care and provide support for that, again, subsidiarity, uh, recognizing that that appropriate level of care may well be at the home, but they require the adequate support for that. Um, and then allocate health resources according to the demands of social justice. And in the background there was the 
this notion of a preferential option for those who are most vulnerable. And recommendation, um, oppose certain very dominant criteria for allocating health resources that focus exclusively on efficiency, maximizing profit, and utilitarian ethics. And I think others would know this better. There's something called qualities that I talk about. And it's essentially, there's a justification for uh, an intervention based on uh, the utility in the sense that uh, by investing that amount of money, the ideal circumstance would be the person would then be functional in society and be able to, again, generate an income and so on. And so that's a way of uh, deciding who should get healthcare resources. Now, the people that have a progressive cognitive and built uh, impairment will always come out at the bottom of that and all. And it's a concern because uh, maybe that's not uh, ethically suitable for making these decisions. So just in closing, I'll come back to um, the cases that uh, I raised at the beginning and uh, that you were thinking about, kind of ethical issues, spiritual issues, uh, that were um, in that case like that, and how a framework such as the one just articulated might give you a way to not only identify these issues, but have a bit of a, an approach to them. Uh, so again, Mr. Uh, or Dr. S, uh, early stage of this condition, and some of the issues that this little case scenario flags, and there's a lot of them. And just by way of example, um, the issue of telling a diagnosis. Um, there's many cultures that are uh, quite adamant against telling diagnosis, and so what happens is members of those communities uh, do not have the benefit of early intervention because they are sort of, it's a shameful thing and they're sort of sequestered. Um, and so it's, 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 a, it's a concern. Um, there's the issue of uh, if one is still only mildly impaired, very important things that one might need to do to um, help one's family with what's coming down the line. Uh, in terms of giving some advice and direction, and that the whole thing about how do you make your wishes known in a way that is actually helpful. Heroic might not be a helpful way of uh, giving advice. And there are ways to do that. Uh, just another issue. Um, the issue of safety. As you recall, there was a concern about his driving. And, uh, and there's this issue of how do you restrict someone so they're safe but still respect their dignity. It's a very tough, tough issue that people face. Um, there's the issue of the autonomy only approach so that um, even though everybody recognizes he's becoming increasingly impaired, there is a, a risk of leaving him to make more decisions than he's really able to and not supporting that. Uh, and then this view of kind of family-centered approaches to care. Uh, another issue in the background is confidentiality. Uh, sometimes this doctor-patient relationship will preclude others involved in care from actually knowing what's going on because of concerns of confidentiality. So these are some of the ethical issues. Um, some of the spiritual issues you need to think about that might be raised. Uh, things such as um, uh, fear of loss, fear of dependence, uh, the notion of mortality. If I lose these abilities, am I loved in the deepest sense? Um, is God absent? Uh, so, just some issues. And uh, again, the, the case was meant to uh, be a springboard to this framework to help people to kind of say, well, what's most important here? What are my foundations? And what are some principles that fall from that? And how might this impact uh, these issues? And again, uh, briefly for the Dr. S at this middle stage, a uh, number of ethical issues uh, that uh, come up in this scenario. Um, a practical issue had to do with systems of care and this issue of smoking.